Hello everybody and welcome back to the Enterprise Dish. Uh, this one's a little unusual only because Mr. Ducks is not traveling. He is in the home base, which is, I think, the the deviation rather than the norm for you. But how does it feel to be back home, Mr. Ducks? It feels good. Uh, I came in this morning to my office and it looked like somebody already took over my office. But that's all good. Caring is sharing. Sharing is caring. <laughs> that is good. Hopefully, are you going to be home for a while or is this... A short trip home. Uh, I'll be home for two weeks, and then okay. I'm off to uh, Shanghai and Changchun and Singapore. Okay, so nice little tour over there. Probably going to get some delicious food, I would imagine. We should uh, we should figure out if we can record an episode there. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I think that I think that's a given. We have to do that at this point, uh, just because the cultural references between yourself and some of the other co-hosts. Like this is a very global podcast. It's actually quite amazing about how many different locations everything's been done from. Um, actually, we should map that out. That would be kind of interesting. Yeah, but did, did you just did you just say I'm the best co-host? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, ducks. You are the best co-host. <laughs> As always, <laughs> everybody's a good co-host. Um, but there's some big news. I, I think the one that's worth pointing out, and this shouldn't come as a major surprise, but Microsoft has officially announced that they are going to retire Skype for Business Online in 2021. Any gut feedback there, Ducks? I think it's a good thing because for the longest time, I think this was two and a half, three years ago now, they said they're mm -hmm. going to retire Skype for Business, and but they didn't have a definitive date. And as a result, what we're seeing is people are just dragging on, and, and and we're guilty of that as well within our organization. But I think now, by having a date, organizations are really seriously thinking about how do they upgrade, how do they migrate their organization to the full use of Microsoft Teams, and retire Skype for Business online. Yep, I think complacency um, is a killer of innovation um, in some organizations, but this one, it's real easy to be like, ah, we're running the software. Why even look at what else is out there? And you just keep on going. And I think you're exactly right. Well, one quick word of advice though. So yeah. good or bad, a lot of messaging around the uh, retirement of Skype is around teams can do the same thing as Skype does, which mm -hmm. is true. But one thing that's always missing is always the conversation around teams can do a whole lot more as well. I've mm. seen organization really thinking about Microsoft Teams as a calling, instant messaging, unified communication tool. And they don't consider and think about all the other capabilities around collaboration and being able to extend Teams to improve day-to-day -day business process. So that's just one word of advice. Think beyond the UC aspect of Skype and think more okay. along the lines of how you can benefit from using Teams, not just for calling and chatting and meetings. Some sage advice right there. Some sage advice. And also speaking of uh, on those messaging and things, Slack actually, a big competitor to Microsoft Teams, although slightly, I think you can make an argument that they potentially target a different demographic mm -hmm. because if you're, if you're running Office 365, I don't think it makes much sense to be paying for Slack, although I know some do, but there are new enterprise controls out there. The short version is letting admins have more control and also detecting, I think this one's kind of interesting, that if a phone is jailbroken, that it can limit the app from running on that device. That's actually somewhat kind of neat to me. Yeah, but like you said, right? Slack targets a different audience. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I've used Slack before and I have a lot of friends and colleagues that use Slack, but a yep. lot of them are very technical devs. Mm -hmm. So what you just described, limiting it on jailbroken phones, I mean, realistically, how many people jailbreak their phone, right? Yeah. Well, so. if you think about it, the, the one thing a lot of people don't connect the dots a lot either is jailbreaking your phone just means that there's a security vulnerability in the device. Like people don't always connect that. And that means that you are bypassing the system infrastructure, mm -hmm. which in any, pri any enterprise environment is never a good step to take. No, not at all. And I think this is a good move for Slack, right? Providing that enterprise level security governance, because I'm sure it's not even because Microsoft is doubling down on it, but mm -hmm. I would think a lot of customers are asking for it in light of all these recent data breaches and security violations. And unfortunately, it's not going to stop. It's just a matter of when. 
Yep. So if you were using Slack, those things are definitely working or in the works. Not all of them have rolled out, but just keep your eye on the prize there that some of that stuff is coming down the pipeline here very soon. And speaking of things, Mr. Ducks, that are very soon, although it's a little bit later this year, we have Ignite coming up. And if you, well, if anybody's watching this has not had the opportunity to go see Ducks present in person, you, you would be uh, you would be smitten to go do so because he's he's one of the better speakers that I've ever seen. I mean, he's just good. Like he's you can see the passion he brings to a podcast. You can imagine what he does on stage. But Mr. Ducks, as we head towards that, and I'm going to be start reaching out to speakers here soon. What is your advice to people who are going to ignite? Maybe speaking at Ignite as we ramp up for Microsoft's. I think it's their largest conference of the year. First of all, again, thank you for your kind words. You're saying I'm a good co-host. I'm a good speaker. So what next? Right? It comes in three, but. <laughs> Uh, so a couple of advice. So first and foremost, they already released the speakers for Ignite. You know, certainly there's a lot of the uh, staple from Microsoft, mm -hmm. all the leaders and Satya and all the uh, key leads of the different uh, product lines. But they've also announced all the community folks, MVPs, industry folks that will be speaking. So one quick advice is think about delivering something that's not regurgitated. I can't even pronounce that word. Regurgitated. What's that regurgitated. Word? Regurgitated. Sorry. There Thanks. Um, from from what's already online, share practical things that you've learned and what works, what doesn't work. And I threw this out there to everybody. Look, if you guys need help, somebody look at your presentation, somebody mm -hmm. to practice with, somebody to help you, coach, give you uh, tips and tricks. I'm here. I'm more than happy to uh, help out anyone who who just needs uh, somebody to to help with for their presentation. Yeah. And. I realistically, I mean, asking for help is amazing, right? First off, Ducks is a very good person to reach out to because he's done it so many. You're, you're a Microsoft regional director, correct? That's right. Yeah. So Ducks not only has the ability to help your presentation make it better, he also has the connections that if you have questions or anything else to make that happen. And then shameless self-plug here, if you are speaking, reach out to me and we'll get you some free promotion across our social channels and on the site to help more people, you know, just get, get those bodies into the seats at the event because nothing's worse than presenting to nobody, but it's Ignite. There will definitely be people there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you, you'll be there, right? With the crew. Oh, yeah. Yep. Our, the whole crew will be down there. Paul will be down there. I believe Mary Jo will be down there. It should be uh, it should be a great time. It's good. Well, yeah. it's in it's in Orlando. It's hard not to have a good time in Orlando. I, I think this time of the year is better because it's not oh, as yeah. hot and it's oh, not yeah. hurricane season anymore. So we won't get those <laughs> worrisome news that it may be canceled. Yeah, well that that's that was the if you remember it was the first year at Orlando the hurric a hurricane mm -hmm. did hit like oh like five days or something before the event. It was crazy. Mm. So. That is, uh, that's a good thing. And the, the, the lower humidity is going to be fantastic, I hope. That's right. it's always It's always hot there. Always hot. So, all right, Mr. Ducks, topic du jour, a reader question, my favorite part of the show. So we had someone write in who runs, uh, and runs basically IT for a bunch of different SMBs. And credit to him, uh, they are using Teams for a lot of the communications between... Sure. Um, you know, the employees and himself, because he travels sure. around, obviously managing a lot. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there managing a lot of small businesses infrastructure. Right. His question of the day, Mr. Ducks, is, is there a better way for him to manage all the team's installs that he has to deal with rather than logging out and logging in each time to see sure. the new conversations? Great question. So unfortunately, out of the box, if you're switching tenants because you're a guest mm -hmm. to different uh, teams and different tenants, there's no seamless way if you're relying on the team's single team's client to do so. However, mm -hmm. let me share a tip with you on how I get around that. So what I would do is I would leave my team's client, either my phone app or the desktop app, in my own tenant, my company app point. Mm -hmm. And then I would use my browsers, especially in Chrome, where you can set up different profiles, logged in with those profiles. Uh. So I would fire up Chrome and I'm automatically logged into those different tenants. So, so that's my yep. quick hack around it. You had a better solution that I was thinking in my head. In my head, I was thinking, oh, you could spin up some VMs because infrastructure nowadays can run multiple VMs on your desktop without really any issue, especially if you're running a lightweight application. And I was thinking, well, you could just log into team and each VM and potentially do it that way. But what you just said would make a lot of sense because mm -hmm. what you can do in Chrome is once you're all logged in is you can install those web apps as looking like native apps. Correct. And if you, like, if you like do a it, shortcut, right. Exactly. 
And if you do that correctly, and as long as you name them correctly, correct. I think you're going to be perfect. And that that is that's actually a pretty genuinely good workaround. Yeah, and it's easy, straightforward, right? Like yeah. necessity is the mother invention. Yeah. And then if you want to get real fan, well, I guess leaving it in the browser, but then there's other applications out there would actually let you pin all those things together. But I guess you could just do that in the browser. But I think that, I think your solution is actually yeah. going to be perfect. And then especially for companies like yours and similar companies, I mm -hmm. suspect your uh, managed service provider, you know, we work with a lot of managed service yep. provider. We have a platform um, that we offer to partners that you can use and manage the infrastructure of all the Office 365 tenants that you manage from ah. backing it up, managing users, making sure permissions aren't you know out of mm -hmm. whack. So check out elements.avpoint.com. Elements is our uh, platform for our managed service providers that they can use and manage multiple tenants. So check it out. Yeah, we'll, we'll, or just check down below in the description. We'll make sure to include that link because you're probably exactly right. If you're already managing multiple teams iterations like that, there's a, a very high probability mm -hmm. that you're also managing a lot more Office 365 on the back end. 100%. Very, very cool. All right, Mr. Ducks, as we wrap it up here on the back of the book, you've been doing a lot of traveling. You got any good dishes for us? Favorite things you've seen along the way? Favorite vehicles you've driven lately? Or what's just going on in your world, my friend? Favorite vehicle. So, boy, lately it's it's been a great summer. So summer's oh, yeah. over, kids back in school, and this is what I call the end of the year uh, 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 explosion of travel and, mm -hmm. and meeting with customers and all that. I think what, what I've been seeing lately, especially meeting with customers around the world, is, is still the rapid adoption of Teams, which is <laughs> really exciting. I've seen organizations getting value out of it. I've seen organizations just starting the journey. So my dish is don't stop. Uh, there's so much goodness in teams that you can take advantage of. And if you're if you're kind of daunted by the enormity or daunted by where to get started, we can certainly help. And mm -hmm. one of the big conversations I've been having lately is, okay, how do we get started? Like, what are the quick hits and quick tips? Come by and check our blog. Uh, we have a program that you can get started with deploying teams within 90 days. So we've been going around talking to customers and uh, meeting uh, potential organizations who want mm -hmm. to use Teams and just sharing a lot of these goodness on how to get started. There you go. It's uh, what the last number they gave us, which is probably higher now, was what, 13 million? Was that daily active users, yes. I think? 13 million daily active usage. And yeah. I saw something recently that they have some number now for weekly active usage. But I believe the goal is to mm -hmm. ramp it up uh a lot in this yeah. new fiscal year so well it's pretty easy to try to figure out what the because as you were saying that my mind wandered to okay what's the upper bound on that number well we know there's some somewhere over 100 million commercial active seats so that's 180 180 million yeah. plus yeah and a so lot if, of those are emails right are yeah. using exchange online so yeah so there's your upper bound if they're only at you know ballpark 13 20 million somewhere in there just pick your number knowing that it could go up to potentially about 180 million there's a lot of runway left a lot Absolutely. of runway left yeah very very cool ducks well we very much appreciate you taking your time to you know part back from your your busy travel schedule to talk to us about office 365 and to give that genuinely helpful hint i'm gonna actually we're gonna be tweeting that out a bunch because i think that's gonna be impacting a lot of people but thank you ducks for stopping by if nothing else everybody else keep your eyes open and peeled for ignite check out the links below hit that subscribe button and we'll catch all of you right back here next time see ya bye